antipsychotic-induced hyperprolactinemia is the topic for uh, this video. And uh, it's a big, long title, but um, it's very important uh, on the licensing exams. Uh, very uh, highly tested topic. So here we go. Well, first of all, I would like to start off with a little diagram. Um, and I'll explain what this is. This represents a fact that dopamine puts the brakes on prolactin. So what does this mean? Dopamine is a neurotransmitter and it regulates prolactin. It basically inhibits prolactin release from the pituitary and prolactin of course is a hormone. Now this is how I used to remember it that dopamine puts the brakes on prolactin. Now in this video we're talking about antipsychotics and antipsychotics are medications that are used to treat uh, psychiatric disorders such as schizophrenia and various other psychiatric uh, emergencies and behavioral problems. Now these medications work as dopamine antagonists and essentially what that means is that they they block the release of dopamine, they decrease dopamine levels in the body. That's their uh, mechanism of action uh, in the brain rather. So when they lower dopamine levels essentially what's happening here is the inhibition is actually taken away and if the inhibition is taken away prolactin levels will rise. So that's where you get or that's how you get hyperprolactinemia elevated prolactin levels in the bloodstream. So essentially you can think of antipsychotic having a side effect of hyperprolactinemia. And that's why the topic is antipsychotic induced hyperprolactinemia. So why is this important? If a patient's on antipsychotic medications and they have high levels of prolactin in their blood as a result, as a side effect, why does um, why is this important? Hyperprolactinemia is important because it can cause a variety of uh, consequences. In particular, of course, we're talking about female patients. And um, they are amenorrhea, which is um, a, a lack of menstrual uh, periods. And this is, of course, a secondary form of amenorrhea. It can also cause infertility. It can also cause sexual dysfunction. And it can also cause weight gain. And finally, important, galactorrhea excessive uh, discharge of milk from the breast. So those are the fundamentals of this topic and I'd like to illustrate this with a couple vignettes. A 27 year old widowed woman who you have treated for several years for depression and hypertension is brought to your office by her sister. Your patient offers little information but her sister reports a three week change. The family has noticed poor appetite, social withdrawal and problems sleeping and concentrating. She has been crying more as the anniversary of her husband's death approaches. The sister tells you that your patient has commented on people driving by all night and watching her. Vitals are essentially normal. She is depressed appearing and has almost no spontaneous speech or motor movement. She tells you that someone has been tampering with her food and that she is afraid to eat it. You diagnose her with a recurrence of depression, severe, with psychotic features and start her on an antipsychotic medication. You inform her that a common side effect of antipsychotic medications is. Well, the topic of this video is antipsychotic induced hyperprolactinemia. Now, hyperprolactinemia is not one of these choices, so we have to think about what does hyperprolactinemia cause? Well, we mentioned earlier that it causes amenorrhea, infertility, sexual dysfunction, weight gain, and galactorrhea. So the answer would be E. And then finally, a 36-year-old woman comes to a gynecologist because of a three-month history of amenorrhea. Until this time, her menstrual periods had been regular. She also complains of decreased sex drive, worsening over the past couple of months. The patient denies any other symptoms. She has no significant medical history, although she started seeing a psychiatrist five months ago after a brief hospitalization during which she was diagnosed with major depressive disorder severe with psychotic features. Her depressive symptoms are resolving. 
which of the following medications is most likely responsible for the patient's presenting complaints during her visit to her gynecologist? Or well, presenting complaints or amenorrhea. So they're saying, which of the following meds cause that as a side effect? Well, this question is actually very interesting, in my opinion, because they've listed two antipsychotics, and both of these are atypical, atypical antipsychotics. Now, we all know that the antipsychotics that cause hyperprolactinemia are the typical ones. And then the drug industry came out with atypical ones that don't have these types of side effects. But they've listed both of them as being atypical. So I had to actually kind of do a little bit of research here. And it turns out that although risperidone is atypical, it actually causes side effects similar to typical antipsychotics. And those side effects are hyperprolactinemia due to dopamine antagonism. And then the, of course, subsequent uh, manifestations of hyperprolactinemia, which are galacteria, sexual dysfunction, amenorrhea, infertility, weight gain, things like that. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I, I think this is a very key point, and I hope um, this is a, a point that you remember.